We're going to take a look at three specialized lighting effects in this lesson. Go to Working Files, Projects, and open up 1005 Lighting, Lightning, and Lens Flare. We're going to apply the lighting effect to these three clips, <laughs> and then the lightning effect to this one, and then finally the lens flare to this one. I decided to put these three effects in this one lesson because the first two, lighting and lightning, have a lot of properties and need some explanation. And lens flare is a special case. I want to show you how you can change the color of lens flare, which you can't do when you simply apply it to a clip. So we'll start off by looking at lighting. Lighting can really give a mood to your piece. So let me go over to lighting by going to effects. I'm going to type in light here so we can get lighting and lightning eventually, but we're looking for lighting effects. It's a strangely named effect. It's the lighting effects effect. Nevertheless, we'll call it lighting. I'm going to drag that to the first clip there. Look at the effect controls panel. The default view is to put one light, but you can have five lights here. But the default view is this one light. It's a spotlight. And you see some other properties here. We'll look at them in a second. Let's open up that first light. You'll see it says it's a spotlight. The other lights will say none for all the types of lights. So you can have up to five lights. Right now, four are set to none. So we'll just work on one light, though, so you get a sense of how that works. This is Spotlight. If I click on the word Lighting Effects, you see it has a little four-pointed thing that means you have a control point. There is the basic shape of the Spotlight. You can change the shape like so, and you can also make it larger or smaller, move it around, position it like so. I think the Spotlight is not necessarily the best one to work because people expect to see a shadow when they see a Spotlight, and there won't be any shadow here. You just have this light falling on her. But you can manipulate this to make it work to your advantage. I prefer the working with something called an Omni Light. So I'm going to switch over to the Omni Light. That's just this kind of circular light that just goes someplace and kind of illuminates that space. But the thing is, it works in concert with ambience. So when you apply the lighting effect, you have these lights, but you also have ambient lighting. Down below here it says ambient light color. That applies to the whole scene, no matter how many lights you have. So right now we have ambient light is white, and it's a certain intensity. And then we've got this Omni light with its intensity and its size and shape. Let's just see how that works. You can change the size and notice how it gets darker as we pull it in. That's because the ambient lighting is not that bright. So you can bring it in a little bit, change its focus up there, perhaps, where you probably want it to be. Move it left and right. It stays a circle. You can't make it into an oval like a spotlight. You can adjust its radius down here as well. Right? You can change the color to give it kind of a mood here. So I'm going to click on the swatch here, the color swatch, open up the color picker. I'm going to put it to a little bit of a warmer color, a little bit toward orange like that. I'm going to pick it down just to be kind of a light orange like that. That just makes it a little bit of a warmer feel there. And I can take the intensity up or down, but before I mess with the intensity too much, I want to go to the ambience of the room here. So I'm going to scroll down to ambience. I want the ambient light color to be kind of warm too, so I'll click on that swatch. Again, go up to orange or so and put a really light light orange like that, just to kind of give the room some warmth. You can change the ambience like that. So if, sometimes you want to be really dramatic, you can do something like that, but that might be kind of strange looking in this circumstance because it is lit by the sun in this room. So we'll just give it a little bit of ambience like that and just sort of highlight the center. And I'll scroll back up here to our main light. And I think we've got this one pretty well nailed. Let's just tone it down just a touch. So this is the after, and that's the before. When you looked at it at first, you probably went, no, it looks like it's reasonably well exposed, but now it has a whole different look. And let me get rid of the little halo here by clicking off the effect. Now you can see what it really looks like. So that's lighting in this case, just to kind of give the room a little bit more warmth and to highlight the person, the center of interest there. Moving on to this next shot, you can kind of also just sort of put her in a focus. So we'll apply the lighting effect to her as well. Let's go to effects, drag lighting over to her like that. You can do the same kind of thing. There's the default spotlight. So again, I'm going to go back to the Omni light because I just think it's a little bit better. The directional is kind of a strange one. It's this little thing that puts the light off to one side and you can change the angle and stuff. But it's just, I don't see that it is that effective. Change the intensity. But to me, the direction doesn't really work that well. So Omni is my go-to light. I think it works well too because we're not really dealing with a 3D scene here. We can't throw shadows on something in the background here like a spotlight would. We can just kind of highlight somebody. That's why I like working with this. If I just click away now just to show you how that looks, it just gives her a little bit of a highlight. Here's the after and there's the before. 
So if you look at that now, oh, well now it's kind of looking the way I might want it to look. Drop the intensity down a little bit maybe. Maybe bring up the ambience in the room just a touch. Like so, so it's not so obvious that we've thrown a spotlight on her or an omnilight on her. But there you go. I'll click off the effect. Click it back on. And I think, you know, no one's going to know that you've done this. They're going to look at this picture and say, oh, that's nice. And they won't know that you've fixed it up from that to that. Now, I think the spotlight effect, as I've mentioned before, does not really work that well. This would be an obvious instance when you'd want to throw a spotlight on, like a follow spot on a stage. You could follow this young rider around, but it doesn't really work that well. If I put it on there, trying to follow her with that kind of a light, with no shadows being thrown and stuff like that, it just doesn't look real. So if you are going to do something, again, I think Omni is your best bet. And if you put Omni on her, for example, instead of spotlight, you can keyframe the center. There's the center right there. You can turn on keyframes to the center. And as she moves around, you might want to move the center to fit wherever she is. So you can set keyframes and have that move over and have it follow her like that. So I'll just briefly show you that little follow spot there. It's just this way, you can just highlight somebody rather than throwing a spotlight on them. So I think Omni, again, is the go-to light for this case and virtually all of the cases. Let's move on down to this shot here, this mountain shot, this actually Grand Canyon shot. We're going to throw lightning on this one. So you've already searched for light, so you can find lightning here under Generate. So when I work with Generate effects, effects from the Generate category like lightning, I like to apply it to an adjustment layer. I think it's just a better workflow and gives you more control. But in the case of lightning, it just doesn't seem to work right. But I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to go over to the project panel, click on that, add a new adjustment layer by clicking New Item, Adjustment Layer. That sets the adjustment layer to the size of the sequence. Click OK. That adds it to the project panel. Drag it over to the clip you want to apply it on top of, and drag that up for the length of the clip like that. And now let's apply the lightning effect to that adjustment layer. Go over to Effects, Lightning, drag it over to Adjustment Layer like that. And now I'm going to click on it like this to turn on the little start and end points here. I'm going to keyframe the end point. I'm going to take the end point there and put it right there on that little mountain there. Turn on keyframes to the end point. And now I'm going to go in a little ways, like so. And I'm going to pull this guy over to have it follow the motion. But you're going to notice that it doesn't follow the motion. Lightning just sort of stays stuck there. It may be a problem with the way lightning works with adjustment layers. So I'm just going to get rid of that and go to the old-fashioned workflow of applying lightning directly to the clip in question. There we go, right there. And now we'll start the process that I started working on just two seconds ago. Click on lightning. We have a start and an end point. Now, which one's the start, which one's the end? You can tell which one's the start and end if you forget by grabbing one of them and dragging it around. And you can see the numbers change over here. So this is the start point. I want it to start off screen. If you can see how far off screen by clicking this drop down list and going to something like 10% and I'll put up there. You might want to have a higher percent on yours because I'm working with a low resolution here. Like so. I'll go back to fit here. Now I want to take this little guy and put it on that peak. Now I'm already in the clip a little ways, but that's okay. We can set a keyframe here and work backwards from here. So I'm going to drag that to the peak there. And now I've set the endpoint, but I want to keyframe that. So I turn on keyframes for the endpoint. Not worried about keyframe the start point. I want it to stay right there centered on the top of the screen coming from some unseen cloud there. Now we're going to go back to the beginning of the clip by pressing the up arrow, not the beginning. I want to move this little guy to that little peak there. Now you see that the lightning is moving with the control point. It didn't move with the control point in the adjustment layer. There we go. So now if I play this, the lightning will stay attached to that more or less. Since we just put two keyframes here, we might want to put one in the center while we're at it. So I'm going to go over here a little bit to where it gets really off kilter there and drag that one over too. So we're adding another keyframe right there. So now it'll probably stay closer to that little peak. And besides it's lightning, it's, it can bounce around if it wants to. Now it's going to go past there, and now it's going to go off again. So we'll get right to the edge of the screen there. If I drag it over again at this time, by moving it, that's going to add a keyframe there too. We're changing the property at a new time that so automatically adds a keyframe. And then we'll go over here a little farther. We'll take that guy right out of the frame here, like that. So the lightning will follow that little peak, which is kind of cool, I think. There we go. That's how that works with keyframes and position. Wild, right? Now we can play with the parameters of lightning. And most of these guys are pretty intuitive. You see a number of segments. The more, the merrier, of course. But the more you do, it looks more like static at some point rather than lightning. But you just decide what you want to do there. The amplitude meaning how big it is in terms of how wide it gets. Again, the wider it is, the more like static and the less like lightning. Detail level. 
It's, you know, how fine a detail are you going to have there? Higher is not necessarily bad. The detail, the amplitude, that's again, that's this little width like that. So the more detail, the more realistic it looks. Branching. How many branches do you want to have? The more branches you have, the more, again, like static it is. And then rebranching means one branch and then branches off the branch. Gets kind of detailed, folks. It's pretty amazing, this lightning effect. Branch angle, you can increase the way it branches off, how wide or how far it branches off, things like that. The length of the branch, how many segments they're going to have in each branch, the width of the branches, the speed, kind of makes it a little more exciting or a little less exciting, whatever you want. Stability, meaning, you know, is it going to go wild? Or is it going to go less than wild? The fixed endpoint is kind of important. If you keep that check, that's going to keep that thing right there on that keyframe. If you don't have fixed, it kind of wobbles around a little bit, but does stay near it. But fixed keeps it right on it. The width of the entire thing, like that. You know, you might want to do that or not. Then there's a core width. That's the inside. The wider the core it is, the less you see of the outside color. Because there's two colors. There's an inside color and an outside color. So you keep the width up kind of high. Then you can have the core be high too. Nevertheless, there you go. That's probably wider than normal, but there you go. You can change the color, the outside color, the inside color. I'll just leave it blue and white. That looks kind of semi-natural in light of what we're doing here. So let's take a look at this and see how it works. Stays pretty well attached to that point there. You may not want it to last quite this long, but that's how it works. There you go, that's lightning. Let's go on down here. I want to apply lens flare to this clip. Typing in lens flare, this lens distortion lens flare. I'm going to double click it after I select this clip to add it to it. There we go. And there's the lens flare. Now, you've seen this before. I'm applying it directly to the clip, which is not the best workflow. It's not that big of a deal. It doesn't destroy the clip like a lot of other generate effects do. So it's not that big a thing. But I want to change the color of the lens flare. And you can't change the colors of the lens flare without changing the color of the clip. So I'm going to undo this by removing this guy from that clip. Now, if I add an adjustment layer and put the lens flare in an adjustment layer, you can't use that to change color either because the adjustment layer applies whatever effect you have in it to whatever clips below it. So if you want to change the color of that adjustment layer, it'll change the color of this clip too. So what you need to use here is something like a solid clip or a solid layer that you can put above it to which you can apply color that won't affect what's below it. So to do that, you go over here to the project panel, go to the new item icon, and select color matte. Color matte is a solid color clip. Click on OK. And then you want to select black, which is the default color. You select black because we're going to make the black go away and let whatever color in this thing show through. So you click that. There's our solid color matte. I'm going to call this a black solid, like that. I'm going to drag that above the clip there and drag it out to match the length of that clip. There we go. Now I've got this black solid above there, which covers up what's below it. You cannot see what's below it. I want to put the lens flare on that clip. So I'm going to go back to the effects panel. I'm going to double click on lens flare because that's currently the active clip. So we'll add lens flare to it. And there's lens flare. Very nice. But you can't see the clip below it. How do you see the clip below it? Well, you go up here to opacity, go down to the blend mode, and choose screen. You could also choose lighten, but it's not quite as nice as screen. Linear dodge, similar, but maybe overdoes it a bit. So screen is my kind of go-to here when I want to take the black out. That works pretty well. So now I've got this lens flare here, and we can keyframe the lens flare center. I'll just walk you briefly through that. So here's the lens flare. You can see the center point. You've got a control point because that little box tells you you have a control point. I'm going to drag that center point up to the top of the screen here, for example, like that. And I'm going to turn on keyframes for that. I'm going to go into the clip a little bit farther now. As we go down, I'm going to bring that thing down. I can't really see it up there. It's kind of tucked off the top of the screen, so I'll go to 10% here and bring it down like that. We'll bring it, let's say, all the way through the scene here by the time we're done. Something like that. Now we've animated that little lens flare. It may not be perfect, but it's just an example here. Let's just watch that briefly. Yeah, you could probably speed that up or something like that. But there you go. There's a lens flare going through the scene, and it's on the black solid. We can see it on the black solid because we use the screen blending mode. Now, what about color? I want to add color to this. I want to change the color of the lens flare, which I can't do if I put it on adjustment layer or on the original clip. So let's go and try to find a color effect here. I'm going to undo this and look at the video effects color correction. And you wouldn't know it, but down here, there's a thing that lets you put color on there called Color Balance HLS. 
view luminance and saturation. Double click that. And down here, there's a little controller here for hue. And hue is what you want to change. Let me put this thing in the middle so you can see it better. There it is. I just rotate this guy. You can see how you can change the hue of that lens flare. So if you want to have a colored lens flare, and you know, wouldn't it be cool to have a color besides the default color? You can come over here, put it on a solid, turn the solid blending mode to screen, and apply the color balance HLS effect, which has a hue wheel here, apply it to change the hue, and you can animate this hue, you can keyframe the hue over time. So that's a look at three fun effects, lighting, lightning, and lens flare.